What's your worst roommate stories? Story 1. In my last two years of school, I rented a house split between five guys, one of whom was a last-minute addition that I begged them not to let live with us. I even offered to pay the rent on his room while I looked for a new one. But I got outvoted, and so we had this guy, who I'll call Roger, because he looked like Roger from American Dad. Roger did not seem physically able to walk without stamping his feet. Multiple guests commented on how loud he was. Oh, and he wore his winter boots inside. Roger said that our Wi-Fi was too slow. He wanted to play Xbox Live while watching Netflix. So he ran an Ethernet cable from our kitchen, through the front hall, and up the stairs into his bedroom. He didn't tape it down nearly either. It hung low in several spots, giving our house the appearance of a spaceship in disrepair. He loudly proclaimed how brilliant he was and how much faster the internet was now, not realizing someone had already cut the Ethernet cable. Roger frequently fell asleep with loud music or TV playing on his tower speakers, and would not turn it off unless his favorite roommate asked him to. Yes, he would tell the other three of us to off and then act all apologetic if Juan would tell him to be quiet. One night it came to a head. He fell asleep during exams with some loud music playing and it woke the whole house up. All of us, his man crush Juan included, knocked on his door for almost an hour trying to get him to turn it down. When he wouldn't answer, we decided to jimmy his lock and turn it down ourselves. He was fast asleep with noise-canceling headphones on. All this time he was falling asleep to music and TV. It was just to antagonize us. Story 2 Senior year of boarding school, my roommate stole my prescription Adderall, oxys from getting my wisdom teeth out, and alcohol I had hidden in a chest under my bed while I was away for the weekend. She ended up overdosing and then told the school I gave it all to her. I got suspended, lost my scholarship for the remainder of the semester, and almost had my college acceptances rescinded. They eventually let me go back on probation to finish my last semester. Almost failed physics because of labs I missed during the three-week suspension. The roommate was a year younger and got a slap on the wrist, plenty of sympathy, and a couple weeks in an inpatient program. This all happened back in 2014, but last I heard she dropped out of college and lives with her parents. She was a huge klepto from an extremely wealthy family and just a pathological liar, so I never felt bad for her. Story 3. Right after college, I lived in a house that rented out rooms on an individual basis. Most people were completely fine, but you'd get the occasional shit roommate. Then there was Doug. Doug was about our age, unemployed, and an alcoholic who would drink himself to blackout almost every day. He was also a total slob and would make huge messes in the kitchen before going back to his room to drink some more and blast loud music. The next day, he wouldn't remember anything see the big mess in the kitchen, and whine about people being gross. Of course, when any of us pointed out that it was his mess, he'd always say he didn't remember doing it and that it couldn't be his mess. Yeah, Doug, I can't imagine why you don't remember. I'm sure the handle of vodka you drank last night had nothing to do with that. He was eventually kicked out because his parents refused to pay his rent anymore. I genuinely hope he got some help because the amount he drank every day would kill an elephant. Story 4 was dating a girl during COVID. She ended up being nuts, so I dumped her, but she started talking to my roommate to try to get information about me. She manipulated him into thinking I was abusive with her, so they colluded and contacted all my dating apps and got me banned on pretty much every dating app. When I found out, my roommate filed a false restraining order and made up some story that I cornered him, shoved him, etc. I had to hire a lawyer, which cost me $5,000. When we went to court, I had so much evidence that he was lying that he didn't go through with the case and we both signed a mutual settlement agreement. I lost my TSA pre and global entry and had to go back and forth with the TSA for eight months to get that back. Worst thing is, I still lived with the guy for a good four to five months because of financial reasons and because of the agreement, I could never speak to him about it. Story 5. My first college roommate never did laundry. For dates, he'd borrow my clean underwear, even though I clearly told him to leave my junk alone, and return them dirty, unwashed, afterwards. Story 6. Freshman year of college, I had a roommate who would get high on ecstasy with her boyfriend and come back to our dorm room and bone while I was also in the dorm room. She also listened to Bass Hunter nonstop and had up-close pictures of her own eyeballs all over the room. Story 7. 
I lived with two other of my really good friends at one point. One was fine and dandy, minus the fact that he would cook for himself, not do the dishes, then complain that there were no dishes for him to cook because we had stopped cleaning up after him. The other, I am no longer friends with, and this is partially the reason. He was a bartender, and he loved to party. He would routinely bring groups of people back to our place after work, often around 3 a.m. One time, I had to be up for work at 6. He brought a bunch of his co-workers back to our place, shit-faced, and they started playing rock band at 3.30 a.m., then got upset when I told them to fuck off. Next, due to the fact that he partied so much, he would sleep in. He also had an alarm clock that would go off until he turned it off. You could hear his alarm clock throughout the apartment. For some reason, it wouldn't wake him up. You could just sit there and listen to it go off for like 30 minutes. But the second you opened his door, it would wake him up and he would be like, oh, sorry, and then turn it off. This happens almost every day. I would pound on the walls, shouting at him to turn it off, but he wouldn't until you actually went in the room. He would get mad if you came in to turn it off for him. Despite the fact that he worked nights, his alarm was set for early in the morning for some weird reason. Finally, our lease was coming up. We all agreed to re-sign. We needed all three of us to afford it. We kept asking him over and over again if he was going to re-sign, and he was always like, yes, yes, yes. The day we had to re-sign, I left for work, and my other buddy left for work. We planned to meet later to re-sign. A couple hours later, I'm at work, and my other roommate calls me and says, yo man, I just got home, and all of our other roommates that is gone. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, all his shit is gone, and there's a letter just saying sorry, not re-signing. He then proceeded to ghost us for weeks. We eventually ended up confronting him at his work, where he eventually admitted to us that he never planned on re-signing, and that he felt the best way was to just wait till we left for work and then move all of his it out so he didn't have to deal with the confrontation. This same guy had a crippling drug and alcohol addiction that we helped him beat, and then he proceeded to treat us and tell us that we were enablers despite the fact that we weren't the ones drinking and doing drugs. He was. We don't talk anymore. Story 8. Early in college, I stayed in the house with three roommates. In the eight months that I was there, they washed the dishes about three or four times. They would do the thing of letting dishes soak for days, weeks on end, sometimes in bleach water in lieu of actually washing them. It even got so bad that they would replace their pots and pans instead of washing them. I had limited myself to a single cup, plate, bowl, etc. that I had brought with me and kept in my room so as to keep from adding to the hoard, even kept my groceries in my dorm mini-fridge that I kept in my room. A couple times, I spent a couple hours washing all of their dishes just so I could have enough room to wash my own, also with the naive hope that maybe once they had a clean slate, they would keep up with it. It didn't take, of course. Eventually, I just got fed up with that and washed my dishes in the bathroom. I ended up leaving and getting my place shortly thereafter. While I'm still friends with most of them nearly 25 years later, I never had roommates again. Had a roomie with no school or work who wouldn't do the dishes. Finally, I told him to have this mess cleaned before I got home. Came home, dishes gone. Found me thrown away in the trash, all my plates, pots, pans, silverware. He said it was impossible to wash. Story 9. Pre-cell phone days. Roommate was kind of a jerk who would take any girl to bed that he could talk into. I wake up one morning and go into the kitchen to make coffee. Girl sitting at a table talking to herself. My mom is going to kill me, dad will murder him, etc. She sees me and asks if I could drop her off at her high school. She has to be on time for sophomore orientation. Yep, she was 15. We were both in our mid-twenties. I moved out that weekend. Story 10. Roommate lived at my place for six months. Spent most of his time in my room smoking weed when I was away. Didn't pay rent and was upset when I told him to leave. Then I became his worst roommate by calling his grandma and telling her that he never paid any rent and had her come pick him up. Story 11. College roommate, junior year. Seven years ago, we had an on-campus townhouse. I found a dingleberry of his in the shower. He had a smell that followed him. Luckily, it was a cyst, so he went home and got it treated and the smell was gone after that. Unluckily, there was an instance of blood splatter on the wall right by our toilet. He visited his parents one weekend and left his door open. You could detect a stench from down the hall. Me and another roommate poked our heads in to see what was smelling. Roommate said, don't look down. I looked down and there was browned underwear. We closed the door. Stench was gone. 
The dude also used bar soap that stayed in the shower. That's fine. The problem was that we knew he wasn't using it enough because it stayed the same size. He also cooked and never cleaned. He was pleasant in conversation and literally in nothing else. Not fun to play games with, not fun to do homework with. Story 12. I had one roommate who I found out was dealing random pills. Then one day he came home with a massive chemical burn on his arm, and a few days later a mysterious man who didn't speak much English came knocking on our door with a huge aloe leaf. We think he was cooking meth. Nice guy, though. The next roommate after that place was a woman with a 10-year-old daughter. She was insane. She told me it would just be the three of us. Then, as soon as I moved in, her baby daddy was full-time living on her couch, in the house 24-7. Two months later, she told me she was going to raise the rent because we're using more water than three people should be. Yeah, no sh I wonder why. I told her I was going to find my own place because the rent was the same at that point. It was raining horribly on moving day, so we had to reschedule. I told her this, and she seemed fine, but then changed her mind randomly and kicked down my door. She started pushing me around, trying to start a fight, and screaming at me. I gently shoved her back, and she screamed, DON'T TOUCH ME! I just looked her in the eyes and said, Do you really want to fight me? She got confused and said, uh, no. So I kicked her out of the room and continued packing. When I went downstairs to get more stuff, she went into this crazy conspiracy theory. She said I was a prostitute sleeping with married men and doing cocaine. When I asked where she got that info, she said, I know you've been working at the club. You lied to me. I should have you arrested. I said, I put my job on the application with the number of the club. She said, oh, well, I didn't read it. Hmm. Story 13. She failed to mention that she was an escort. There were strange men in our apartment at all times. She also had an OnlyFans that she would create content for in our shared living room, leaving her plug out on our shared furniture. Needless to say, I quickly got the fuck out of there after two months. Story 14. Okay, so I have a couple. First roommate in college liked to get high before we had any type of legal in state, mind you. So not only would he wake me up late all the time to beg me to go get him food or snacks, I straight up started to tell him, you know I'm gonna get myself something, right? Which he was okay with, and he didn't leave the room. Skip a bit, and his parents show up to help him pack. Turns out he got busted for hotboxing his car on campus, and they kicked him out. While packing, though, we learned he got so paranoid he wouldn't even leave to use the dorm bathroom and had been pissing in bottles and hiding them in his closet for weeks. Vomit noises. Then, another roommate at college was such an awkward person that I, while not usually great with women, felt like Casanova. He got so bad about not showering that people apologized to me because they could smell him from outside the room and knew I was suffering. I'd Febreze him in his sleep or do it to his stuff while he was gone. It got to the point where the RA started to tell him if the smell is leaving the room, he's getting a bucket with soapy water. Somehow, I still got laid an abnormal amount in college, despite the smell from the guy. Story 15. I was in college and lived with random girls because I had gotten into a car accident and last minute found housing. All the girls were friends, and one was pregnant, and moved out because she was due. A random girl moved in who was never there. She got a kitten, when we were not allowed to have kittens, and would leave it locked in her room all day with no attention, so we would break in and try to give it some. In hindsight, I should have reported her. She ended up making bacon one day when her boyfriend was visiting and left it unattended. It splattered all over and caught the kitchen on fire and refused to admit it was her. It was wild. We all had to pay to remodel the kitchen because she didn't want to take responsibility. She ended up moving out and brought her aunt and cousins with her because she knew she fucked up. The other roommates were getting into it with her family and they all started throwing hands. I went to record them and the one was coming after me like, oh, you're trying to record us? I ran upstairs and called the cops. It was absolutely ridiculous how 35-year-olds or 40-year-olds would really fight college girls because their niece is a liar. It was unreal. Story 16. In college, I rented a room in a house from a slumlord. Roommates were heroin addicts and twin brothers who would constantly steal my food. I baked a batch of brownies with a whole patch of X-lax in them, figured they'd take one or two, get the squirts, and I'd tell them not to fuck with my shit anymore. One ate the whole pan. Overnight, I heard puking, followed by dry heaving. It went on for a while. 
He told me the next day he had food poisoning and everything came out the other end. I never told him. Story 17 was in college living in a suite style apartment, four bedrooms with private bath, shared living and shared kitchen. My friend rented a room, I had a room, and we got two rando assigned to us. After a few months, our place started to increasingly smell worse, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. We deep cleaned, bleached everything, but could not find the source. Only thing we didn't do was go through the two randos' rooms. One day, one of the randoms went home for the weekend. My buddy and I broke into his room and discovered the source. This dude was shitting in a plastic bin and keeping it under his table. After a big what the f moment, we disposed of it and confronted him. He of course denied it all, and claimed he never did such a thing. After several days, the smell went away and never came back. Poop Bucket is now a cop. Story 18. I had three at the same time. One was a severe alcoholic and a pervert that would often pass out on the floor of the kitchen and quite frequently left the stove on. I fed his poor cat a lot. When he was pissed drunk, I was careful not to be alone with him because he tried to grope me. The other roommate was filthy. He never washed clothes and just bought new ones. Whenever we ran out of dishes, I would have to go collect the hordes of moldy plates and cups from his room. He never ever cleaned his bong and it had that awful smell. He'd get offended when he offered to smoke me out and I declined because of the bong water. Worst of all, he left his personal toys in the shower that we all shared. When I asked him to please be considerate, he said, I thought we were sex positive in this house. Dude, I don't know how to explain that leaving your masturbation toys in the common shower is just gross. In the midst of all this, my boyfriend that I shared a room with developed a cocaine and video game addiction and started pissing in jugs. I was so miserable that year, and when I finally saved enough to move out and dump the boyfriend, my cat and I went on to live our best single lives. I do not miss my early 20s. Story 19 the cheapest, most selfish person in existence. The one TV at our apartment was owned by him, and it was at least 10 years old and on the verge of going out. One night before bed, I switched it off because I seriously feared that it was a fire hazard. I awoke at past midnight with him returning home, furious that I broke his TV because it would not turn on, demanded restitution, and became really aggressive. I went out to call the police. This was in the early 90s, so no cell phones. When I got back, he'd totally switched personalities and was calm and rational. My mom bought a new TV, but it was mine, and this was one I let him use. One night, I was watching Star Trek, and he comes and switches the channel in mid-episode. I tell him that's not cool and to turn it back. He flips out, becomes violent, and we have a physical fight. I move out and take the TV with me. Then he has no TV at all. Last I heard, he was threatening to file charges against me for assault. This was 1993, and no charge ever came. Toll. Story 20. Moved into a house with my three friends. One was my best friend, and he was cool. The other was his girlfriend and our mutual friend, who was also another girl. We were the luckiest people alive because we were renting a three-bedroom house for 500 a month. My buddy grew up poor, and I was homeless for a year. We both knew how lucky we were. We fought hard for everything we had, but the two girls we lived with were spoiled. They f***ed up everything for us. They would do everything from invite strangers over to party without asking us on work nights to skipping the rent. They would steal our food and never go grocery shopping. They would turn the AC down to 63 degrees in the middle of 100 degree heat waves, causing our utility bill to be higher than our rent. They'd break sh** in the house and start arguments with each other. The one girl even brought in two friends to live in her bedroom with her for six months without even asking us. I worked a seriously demanding job at the time. I woke up at 4 a.m. every morning and got to work by 5 a.m. I wouldn't be home until anywhere from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. most nights. It was incredibly stressful. This was very difficult when the girls kept inviting anywhere from 10 to 30 people to party at our house every f***ing night. I even came home at 1 a.m. once to find a stranger passed out in my bed covered in vomit. They also played music so loud every night that it would shake my bedroom wall. The girls didn't give a because they just called out constantly and eventually quit their jobs. Did I also mention that half these strangers were teenagers who were illegally drinking at our house and then driving home? 
One night, my friend's girlfriend got drunk and started stabbing the bedroom door with a knife. This isn't even our property, my buddy went to stop her, and she stabbed him three times. I had to go pin her against the wall and have some random stranger come grab the knife from her friend. It was f***. Insane. I had to beg the landlord not to kick us out and replace the door. One time, somebody in the house ripped the shower head off in the shower during one of their parties. The threads were ruined, and I had to replace the entire pipe. They also raided our fridge and went through my month's worth of food I had just bought in a single night. This was a reoccurring event. I eventually bought a mini fridge and a lock for my door. That worked for a while until someone drunkenly fell through my door in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. One of the girl's friends f***ing hated me because I'd always come out and kick people out. See, my roommate was a small girl who would tell me she'd stop doing this shit, but then do it the next day anyways. She ended up befriending this huge girl who would shit talk me constantly in my own house for her. The bitch would constantly disrespect me in front of people and tell them to keep partying. She didn't even live there. She just came over to talk shit, get drunk, and do coke on the living room table my buddy and I bought. That table also broke in two one night. One time, they had so many people in the house that the floor just broke. My buddy and I had to fix it to keep us all from getting kicked out. It cost a ton of money and an entire weekend that I should have spent relaxing. It's just another thing to add to the list I had to fix there. I fixed lights and windows that were shattered, punched drywalls, toilets, holes in the yard from cars parking in the yard, outlets that were ripped out, paint that was scratched or drawn on, our mailbox after being hit by a drunken teen, countertops that had been burned by thousands of cigarettes, busted water pipes from idiots crawling under the sink, I could go on all day. I spent thousands on this house to avoid losing the only place I could afford to rent. One day, I came home from work to a complete nightmare. They broke half the drywall in the living room. Somebody had scratched up the hardwood floor so bad that half of it would need to be replaced. The curtain rods on two of the windows had been ripped off the wall. The kitchen sink had been pulled off the wall and had leaked into the floor all night. Our refrigerator had been turned over entirely. This was when the table I bought was snapped in two. There was vomit all over the house. People were passed out on the ground everywhere. There was coke on every flat surface in the house. My bookshelf had been knocked over, and half of them were burnt in the yard, from what I heard my buddy tell me. I just quit that day. I recorded it all, met up with the landlord, and showed them the video later that day. She was understandably furious. I admitted to her that I had been repairing things for about a year now to hide it from her. She wasn't even angry at me, surprisingly. She was just happy one of her tenants was being honest. I sent her all the video evidence and told her that the people were all still there when I left, just passed out on the floor. I told her I had found another living arrangement and had to leave. She thanked me and I left. I had packed all my stuff that night and left without saying a word. About the time I got done talking to the landlord, my roommate was messaging me about how she needed help cleaning and fixing the house. I just ignored her and took all my stuff to my girlfriend's house. She later messaged me, saying the cops were there. She had an entire court case about it and was evicted. She had to pay the last month's rent and utilities alone, as well as all the damages. I haven't talked to her since then. Ash, if you're reading this, you bitch.